Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back. It's Travis here with JT Wealth, and this is the video you've all been waiting for. I asked a while back whether or not people would like to see a video comparing Bitcoin and Ethereum to know which one you should invest your money in. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Bitcoin or Ethereum, what will it be? Let's get into it. And you might have noticed I don't have your normal Bud Light. Today I have the Bud Light Chilada made with Clamato juice, changing it up a little bit. But Bitcoin versus Ethereum, the number one versus the number two crypto in the world by market cap. You have the very first crypto ever and the very first crypto ever to offer smart contracts. There's so much going on behind the scenes here. They have a lot in common, but they also have a lot that changes things that are very different uh, as far as their best use case. And when you think about cryptocurrency and which investment you want to have, yes, it's important to look at history, but it's also important to look towards the future. Which one of these cryptos is going to be the one that makes you the most money and the one that gets the most use? So I'm going to show you guys a couple different articles that I was looking at when doing my research to try to come up with information I either didn't know or just stuff that I could provide you guys that would be useful in making your decision on whether or not to invest in either Ether or Bitcoin. So when I show you guys these articles, know that I used uh, both of them. I pulled some stuff from each. I also saw stuff from other articles. I've got stuff floating around up here that I've read years ago or, or recently. So you're just gonna have to bear with me as I present the information in the best way that I can. And also know that I am invested in both, okay? I have Bitcoin and I have Ethereum and I have them in about a 50-50 split. Now, will that continue towards the future? I don't know. I might have a heavier asset allocation towards one or the other. I'll explain that as we get closer to the end of this video. But we're gonna break down the similarities and the differences from Bitcoin and Ethereum and then help you guys make the decision on which is the best for you and your risk tolerance. The first article I used came from US News and it was titled Bitcoin versus Ethereum, which is a better buy? And this came out back in October 19th. I also took some information off of The Ascent, which is a Motley Fool part, um, and it was Bitcoin versus Ethereum, how the two crypto giants stack up. And that was published on October 5th. So both within a month, uh, as far as their age goes, today is November 4th. So these are not old articles. They're not brand new. They weren't written today. But as far as approaching Bitcoin and Ethereum, nothing has significantly changed, possibly the price, but not significantly, right? As far as how Bitcoin and Ethereum is used and what it could do in the future. So I think both of these articles are strong starting points for anybody looking to start down the path of determining which of these is going to be their go-to cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin was first traded in 2009. Back then you could buy one of these new digital tokens for less than a penny and prices rose and rose, albeit with a great deal of volatility over the years. And as of October 19th, Bitcoin is near its all time highs above $60,000. Ethereum debuted in 2015 at less than $3 and soared to more than $1,400 by 2018. And at the time of this writing, Ethereum traded at more than $3,800. Now, we obviously know Bitcoin's over $60,000, Ethereum's over $4,500, I believe, at this point. So these prices have moved significantly in the last month. So now, by comparison, General Motors, I'm sorry, General Electric shares were just under $3 in 1995 and adjusting for dividends and stock splits since then, today it's only going for $104. So that's pretty crazy to think of General Electric as a really big company. And when they came out at $3, now they're trading at about 105. Ethereum came out at $3. Now they're trading at 4,500. These are not equitable stocks comparison wise, right? You've got the crypto world and you've got the stock world. They are not the same. Now I'm gonna leave this chart up just for you guys to kind of take a look and it just briefly covers some of the stuff that's going on with the launch dates, market cap, speed, the price growth, and the price growth since first traded for both Bitcoin and Ethereum while I talk over some further information. Now, Bitcoin and Ethereum might be the two biggest cryptocurrencies by market cap, but the similarities more or less end there. Yeah, they've got a lot of similarities, just both being cryptocurrencies. One kind of kickstarting the whole thing, Ethereum jumping on that idea and uh, elaborating it, advancing it, bringing smart contracts to the table. So there are some similarities, don't get me wrong, but the differences are far greater than the similarities. And 
so we're, 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 we're not going to get into the history too much, right? But just knowing which is the better buy is very important to understand the differences between these two and how that's going to impact the future as far as the price of each one of these assets goes. So we'll start with Bitcoin for first. This is the de facto cryptocurrency leader. It's the highest by market cap in the world. No other coin even comes close. Uh, Ethereum is number two, but it's not even there yet. And Bitcoin's market cap now exceeds $1 trillion. The total market cap for all cryptocurrencies is roughly $2.5 trillion. So it makes up almost half of the entire crypto market cap. And the second most valuable digital, like I said, is Ethereum. And the market cap for that is around $450 billion. So less than half of Bitcoin. Now, one of the biggest things to note is Bitcoin has the highest attention from large investors. The Winklevoss twins, the famous Harvard alum who claim Mark Zuckerberg stole their idea for Facebook, famously tried to start a Bitcoin ETF, but they were rebuffed by the SEC. And crypto has been expanding as a widely accepted asset in the investing community. There has been a growing appetite for crypto investments from individual and institutional investors alike. And this interest only set to increase as the SEC has recently approved the first Bitcoin futures ETF to go to the market. Now, number two, it is relative. It has relative stability, simplicity, and acceptance. It's a decentralized currency beyond the grasp of the Federal Reserve or any other central bank with a predefined maximum supply. And that makes it an attractive concept with which people worldwide can resonate. And in the case of Bitcoin, the market's high opinion of that concept have been thoroughly tested and validated over time. Bitcoin is a scarce digital currency and store of value. While still volatile, it tends to be one of the most stable cryptocurrencies with the longest history and has been the most consistent and best performing investment asset year after year for the last 10 years. And that was from Steve Elric, the CEO and co-founder of Voyager Digital, which is a crypto asset broker. Now, lastly, on the Bitcoin realm, there is a limited supply of Bitcoin. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins. That known limit to global supply is a core reason why some investors consider the cryptocurrency akin to digital gold. However, unlike gold, newly discovered reserves aren't possible, and nearly 90% of Bitcoins, or 18.6 million, have already been mined. The rate of new Bitcoin creations also gets slower over time through a process known as the Bitcoin halving, which cuts the pace of Bitcoin creation in half every 210,000 block transactions. The last Bitcoin halving was in May of 2020, and at the current pace, the next halving will be sometime in 2024. So those are some of the three biggest things that I look at when discussing Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency and utilizing that type of information in my future decisions to purchase more Bitcoin or more Ethereum. Now let's delve into three big reasons for Ethereum. So Ethereum has a very different goal than Bitcoin. The two leading cryptocurrencies have drastically different use cases as well. Ethereum operates as a decentralized network on top of which applications can be built. Many cryptocurrencies tokens are actually issued on the Ethereum network kind of like the Shiba Inu everybody's been talking about. Now, when people compare Bitcoin and Ethereum, this is a direct quote. When people compare Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's a bit like comparing gold with electricity. They are both valuable, but have very different uses. Ethereum is infrastructure. It is a blockchain that is in early days, but has the potential to revolutionize finance and technology. The ability to use Ethereum platforms to change the way mortgages are transferred, securities are traded, and many other fields work has helped to bring about its next characteristic. So you might be noticing a trend here as far as how Ethereum has a much, much greater use case and can be opening the doors for a future cryptocurrency world, whereas Bitcoin might be more of that store of value, the digital gold. Yes, it's a very, very high priced asset, and that price could continue to skyrocket, but for a different reason. Our second reason for Ethereum, there is more development. Naturally, because Ethereum's utility is limited only by the ingenuity of the world's developers, there's more activity surrounding the platform. Technically, the cryptocurrency used to facilitate Ethereum transactions is called Ether, but it's probably referred to as Ethereum, or I'm sorry, popularly referred to as Ethereum. Now, either way, the number of Ethereum-related repositories on the developer platform GitHub is 263 to Bitcoin's 
4. And repositories are similar to project folders where developers collaborating through GitHub can access project information. In number 3 for Ethereum, there's a fundamental change in how blocks are created. Instead of miners with the most computing power having the greatest advantage in successfully creating new tokens, those with the largest ownership stake are now granted that right. And this is another quote, Ethereum has been updated to mint new ETH or Ether through a process called proof of stake. And that's according to Daniel Polotsky, the CEO and founder of CoinFlip, a Bitcoin ATM operator. The quote goes on to say, with point, I'm sorry, proof of stake, users are required to put up collateral or stake in the form of Ether to become a validator on the network. So the more Ether that is staked, the higher the value because there are fewer Ether in circulation. In addition to proof of stake that removes the costs associated with mining such as electricity and hardware costs, meaning that fewer Ether will be sold by miners. Instead, these Ether will be staked, driving up the value even further. The continued growth of decentralized finance or DeFi is another hugely bullish catalyst for Ethereum. The concept is that traditional financial intermediaries like brokerages and exchanges are eliminated. The idea has enjoyed newfound mainstream relevance as some brokerages such as Robinhood prohibited investors from buying stops like GameStop or AMC earlier during the meme stock frenzies of 2021. Basically what they're saying there is if you had a financial network built on the Ethereum uh, crypto blockchain, it wouldn't give the organization like Robinhood or whomever was responsible for that, um, it wouldn't have given them the right to do that. You would have had no problems with that situation. You would have been able to continue to trade because it would have been on the blockchain Ethereum network and not controlled by an individual group. Okay, so three reasons for Bitcoin, three reasons for Ethereum. Let's bottle it down now. Which cryptocurrency should you be buying? And honestly, that decision is completely based on your risk profile. What type of investment are you making? Is it a really long-term investment? How much are you investing? Things like that still come into play with cryptocurrency, dare I say even more than with regular securities. Now, both Bitcoin and Ethereum have massive bull case catalysts that could come up in the near term or in the next five, 10 years that are going to cause both of the prices to absolutely skyrocket. So it's difficult to say, hey, you should definitely invest in Bitcoin or hey, you should definitely invest in Ethereum because I think if you only invest in one, you're going to miss out on the growth of the other. That's why I'm invested in both. But if I had to look at Bitcoin and Ethereum and choose the one that I thought was going to be the most productive, most effective, most growth in the next five to 10 years, my say is Ethereum. And if I've got to put the more, more of my money into one or the other asset, it's going to be Ethereum. Now, Bitcoin is the more mainstream, the more accepted cryptocurrency. So that means Ethereum has possibly a little bit more risk attached to it. But I think with that risk comes higher growth opportunity, right? More often than not, if there is a excessive risk associated with something, that means there's also the opportunity for excessive growth and making more money. I think as we get closer and closer to Ethereum 2.0 kicking off, we're going to see that proof of stake move up. We're already seeing smaller cryptocurrencies like SHIB and assorted uh, other cryptocurrencies creating a higher burn rate for Ethereum, which is basically lowering the total volume of Ether on the network and increasing the price. Also, Although Bitcoin skyrocketed recently, it has kind of leveled out between that 60 and $63,000 mark. It keeps kind of wobbling between. However, we have managed to see cryptocurrency Ethereum skyrocket up over $4,500 at one point. It seems to be holding a lot stronger at those levels as it is making money off other cryptocurrencies. Lastly, I'll say I don't think you can choose wrong. I think if you choose Bitcoin or if you choose Ethereum, you're going to make money in the long run. I have no intention of selling my Bitcoin to buy more Ethereum. Likewise, I have no intention of my selling my Ethereum to buy more crypto Bitcoin. I will just continue dollar cost averaging into my Ethereum positions when I see fit. Excuse me, it is at an all time high right now, um, but that's not to say it's a bad time to purchase. It could still continue to go up and up, and eventually we could be looking at a $4,500 Ethereum as, man, I wish I had got in at that level. You just never know.
All right, guys, but that is it for Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Hopefully you got some value from today's video. And just remember, I'm not telling you guys to buy either of these cryptos. Cryptocurrencies as a whole are extremely volatile assets, and I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just providing this information to you for information and entertainment purposes only. Do your own due diligence before investing any of your hard-earned money in any asset at all. Until next time, guys, thanks for checking out the video, and bottoms up.